every marine spirit fighting against the project, the Lord will silence them. The agent of darkness fighting against the project, the Lord will destroy them. Let's pray against every hindrance to the project. Pray against every hindrance to open doors, job opportunities for the unemployed. Let's pray this morning for job opportunities, the companies, the ministries, and etc. All the opportunities that the Lord has given. If you are willing and obedience, we shall eat the good of the land. The earth is the Lord and his fullness thereof. Let's pray this morning and talk to the Lord. The Lord has blessed the land. Let's pray that every hindrance is the Lord will destroy them for the progress of the people, for job opportunities, for financial breakthrough, for prosperity. O oh Lord, arise for this nation, for this state, for this local government. Every enemy of the progress of this land, let's pray against them. Every occultism, every evil vices, let's pray against the devices of the wicked ones. Pray against the devil and all his cohorts. Let's buy them this morning and destroy them this morning in this land. Behold, I give unto you power. This morning, pray and destroy. Send the thunder of the Lord to scatter all the coven of the wicked ones in the company, the community. The local government, the ministries, let us pray this morning and scatter them. The Bible says, What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. We are serving the Lord. We are serving a mighty God, the God that can do and undo. That is the God that you have come to seek after this morning. The Lord will turn away your captivity. Amen. Please, if you have testimonies, go to the back and meet our leaders. You've been interviewed, and then you come and give your testimony. The miracle of what God has done belongs to you, but the testimony belongs to God. When you testify, God puts a seal of perfection on it. Amen? Amen? Then if you also have a prayer request, what you want the people of God to jointly join their faith to pray for you, please, you still have the opportunity to submit your prayer request. This morning, God is going to turn down in the foundation of that your challenge in the name of Jesus Christ. Just be seated a moment. Let us take some anchor scriptures before we go to warfare prayers. We are looking at the direction for these warfare prayers, restoration, recovery of all our missing blessings, and then reversal of delays. Praise the Lord. What you could not achieve in 10 years, God is going to compress the blessing in 10 months in the name of Jesus Christ. What you have been denied, office positions or contracts or whatever it is, 
God is going to give it to you. Say, for your shame, you shall have minimum double blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. A woman could not conceive for more than five years. And then God visited the woman and gave her twins. This morning, God is going to give you minimum twins in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at Ruth. Ruth chapter 3. Anybody that is holding your, what belongs to you, it is time for them to release it for, unto you. You don't understand what I said? Praise the Lord. Look at Ruth chapter 3. Verse 18. Then says she, Sissy, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall. For the man will not be in rest until he has finished. Whoever that is holding what belongs to you will not be at peace. God is going to move them to release it unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Proverbs 21, verse 1. Look at Proverbs. Chapter 21, verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water. He turneth to water whatsoever he will. The heart of any man or woman that is holding on to your blessings, holding on to your breakthroughs, or has refused to sign your contract papers, this morning, God will turn around their hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Job chapter 5, verse 12 says, God is appointed the devices of the crafty, so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. God will disappoint them in Jesus' name. Now let's go to this beautiful story in Esther chapter 6. Chapter 6, 1 to 3. On that night, could not the king sleep and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bictana and Teresh, two of the king chamberlains, the keepers of the door who sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. Look at verse 3. And the king said, what honor and dignity have been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants, that ministered unto him, there is nothing done for him. That may be your situation before you come. But this morning, God is going to reverse it in the name of Jesus Christ. Chapter 7, verse 10. So they hanged, they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's throat pacified. That was the enemy that was withholding the blessing of Mordecai and Esther. This morning, all those enemies that are standing behind between you and your blessings, God is going to flush them out in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will enter into your rest in chapter 8 of Esther. On that day, did the king of Ahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jews, the Jews' enemy unto Esther. It was after Haman had been removed that the blessing of Esther and Haman, so the blessing of Esther, and Mordecai came to pass. The queen and Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told him what it was unto her. Now look at verse 5. And said, If you please the king, and if I have found favor in, the, in his sight, and the thing seem right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Haman, Amadatta, the Agagites, which he wrote to destroy the Jews which are in all the king's provinces. There was reversal. All the evil that have been written against you, against your family, against your lineage, against your blessing, this morning, they are going to be reversed in the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, before we rise up to pray, look at Esther chapter 9. Esther chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. 
Now the twelfth month, that is the month of Ada, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution, in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to the contrary, that the Jews had rule over them that hated them. From today, you are going to have rule over your haters in the name of Jesus Christ. The Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of the king of Ahasuerus to lay hand on such as saw their hearts, and no man could withstand them, for the fear of them fell upon all people. No man or woman will be able to stand against you, because your fear and your dread will fall upon them in Jesus' name. Rise up on your feet and let's go to God in prayers. Unquestionable you are the Lord. Unquestionable you are the Lord. Unquestionable, unquestionable, unquestionable you are the Lord. There is no one like you. The Lord. Unquestionable you are the Lord. Unquestionable, 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 you are the Lord. There is no one like you. No one can question the power of God. Amen. We're going to pray that God is going to reverse all the plans of the enemies, all the planting of the enemies, all their writings against our lives, all the decrees of the enemies against your life, against your family, against your business, against your fortunes. Open your mouth and begin to pray as God reverse all the plans of the wicked against the Jews. This morning, God is going to reverse Every wicked plot of the enemy against your life, against your business, against your lineage. God will disappoint them. As God disappointed Haman, God is going to disappoint all your haters. All those who are holding what, belo what belongs to you. God will bring their hand down and they will release what belongs to you. That man that have refused to sign out your contract papers this morning. God will move him to sign the papers. God will move him against his will. Whatever belongs to you that is in the camp of the enemies, this morning, reversal. This morning, restoration. This morning, recovery. You will recover your fortunes. You will recover your blessings. You will recover your dignity. Tell the Lord, God is here to deliver you. God is here to recover you, all that you have lost. You shall not build and another person a habit, no. You will eat the good of the lamb. Total restoration, total recovery. Every power from the pit of hell, fighting against my blessing, fighting against my health, Fighting against the peace in my family. Fighting against my children. Fighting against my business. Fighting against my career. They must bow. They must bow. Haman hey and his agent must bow. Haman hey and his friends must bow. Anyone that has taken my name, your name to anywhere, God is going to thunder in their midst. Anywhere they mention your name, they will see the blood of Jesus. Anywhere they mention your name, they will see the power of God. Whatever the Lord has not planted shall be rooted out. Root out sickness from your life. Root out poverty, lack and want. Root out rising and falling. Root out poverty. Root out disappointment. Root out failure. Whatever God has not planted in your life, in your destiny, 
root them out. Behold, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you shall burn on earth shall be burned in heaven. Whatever you shall lose on earth shall be lost on earth. Total restoration of all your missing blessings. God will restore you to your estate. God will restore you to your blessings. No man or woman shall be able to stand before you. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Take authority. Bind the works of darkness. All the occulting powers. All the juju powers. All the demon powers. Take authority against them. All the rising and falling. Take authority against them. That sickness that has refused to go. Bind that problem. Destroy the power of the enemy in your life. In your destiny. Shame to the devil. Shame to the devil. Satan, shame unto you. All powers belong to Jesus. Satan, shame unto ye, belong to Jesus. Satan, shame unto you, all powers belong to Jesus. Satan, shame unto you, powers belong to Jesus. Satan, shame unto you, all powers belong to Jesus. Satan, shame unto you, all powers belong to Jesus. Pray, pray, let them lose their hold upon your life. Satan will lose his hold upon your life. Every demon, they will lose their hold upon your life. Total restoration, total recovery of all your missing blessings. No more delay, no more denial. God will break the yoke of the strong enemies. Their foundations are crumbled. God will flush out all the all the all the heman. Yahweh, your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name then we pray at the end of the whole encounter Haman was hanged at the gallows which he prepared for Mordecai 
the wickedness of the wicked against your life shall come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. Joseph told his wicked brethren, you thought it evil against me, but God meant it for good. The evil they meant against you, God shall turn them to good in the name of Jesus Christ. And King Ahasuerus gave the house of Haman to Esther and Mordecai. This morning, God is restoring whatever that has belonged to you, that the enemy has stolen, double restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. And the fear of the Jews came upon all those, all those people. Your name will bring terror against your enemies. When they hear your name, hear your lineage, terror and anguish will fall upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you because your name is powerful. Your name is mighty. Whatever that has terrorized your sons and daughters before this time, Lord, this morning, according to your word, according to your unchanging promises, they are loose in the name of Jesus Christ. Esther and Mordecai, we are released into their blessings. Father, release your sons and daughters into their blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. You protected Esther and the Mordecai and the Jews, and their name sent terror to the enemies. Father, from today, the names of your sons and daughters will send terror in the camp of their enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. As we make progress in this meeting, continue with us. By next week's Wednesday, they will come and share their testimonies of how you have intervened in their lives and give them double restorations. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. As we are standing, we want to pray for a prayer request. We have some prayer requests here in my hand. We are going to pray, and I believe God, as we pray, join our faith together and pray, God will answer them all in Jesus' name. Number one, a brother said, I want God to be on my side. God to enable him. God to be his support that his mother's burial will be a successful one in Jesus' name. He also said he want God to grant his children salvation and guide a daughter wherever she is. I want us to open our mouth and commit this prayer request into the hand of the mighty God. That God that knoweth the hearts of the writer will meet him at the point of his need. Let's open our mouth and pray. And now the Lord to intervene and grant answer to this request. Pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Another one said, brethren, please pray for me that God should heal me of this cough. I want God to provide me a better job opportunity. These two prayer requests, I want us to take it to the Lord in prayer. Healing of cough and provision for job opportunity. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And as a brother or sister of us, God will do it to him. It's a merciful God. As we pray together, the Lord will answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Another one right, we want God to open better doors of opportunity and to grant them their personal family house. And I know as we pray, we join our faith together, God will answer this prayer in Jesus' name. Let's take it to God in prayer. Success in Wayek Esam. It's also his request. We should pray it and come to God. And I know our God is a God that answers the prayer. He will answer.
Another one said we should pray for total healing of eye problem. And the whole of his body, body pain. He wants to pray for total deliverance from evil power from this family. Restoration of total mind. Pray that the Lord will answer this person's prayer. Healing, high problem, and total mindset. In Jesus' name we pray. Another one said we want us to we want to thank God for his for his protection. He said God should protect this family from this 2022 to 2023 successfully in Jesus' name. Let's commit this family into the hand of the mighty God that all his requests that he has written down this morning heaven who sees everything will see and grant him his heart desire in Jesus name in Jesus mighty name we pray let's step forth our hand into this prayer request and ask the Lord to answer them all. Open your mouth and pray. The Lord will attain to everyone all their requests, all their needs, all their challenges. The one I read, the one I couldn't read, heaven knows them all. Pray that the Lord will grant them their heart desire and so shall it be in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, you have the mighty eye that sees everything. You are omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipresent God. We know that you see more than the ordinary eye. You understand more than even the writers of this request. Father, by your fatherly care, O Lord, I pray you meet them all at the point of their need in Jesus' name. Put testimony in their mouth that next they come, O Lord, they will give it unto your glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A mighty amen before you sit down. Amen. You can sit down. Praise the Lord. We have a testimony here. And we are calling upon our sister, Sister Udoka Clement, to come and give a testimony. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise and praise the Lord. I want to thank God this morning without wasting too much time for his faithfulness and for his goodness and greatness upon my life. Some few years back, around that kind of 2016, 2017, I was having some kind of challenges on, with my health. I cannot really tell what the challenge was. Sometimes when I go to test, they will say there is, no, uh, there is no problem, but inside me, in fact, I came here one Wednesday prayer, and our arrow was preaching. He made mention of it. There are some people, when they go to the hospital, they will tell them there is no problem, but inside of them, they were dying. I was now claiming my healing from that. I said, God, even if I've gone for test, I remember uh, uh, St. Peter's Clinic, that was, the doctor can testify. 
Sometimes he will give me different kind of tests. At the end of the day, nothing. And me, I believe God that there is nothing wrong with me. Then, at the same way, as there is nothing wrong with me, that in my body, that God should heal me. Several, when I come here, I will give the prayer point. I remember meeting our rule one-on-one. He gave me the assurance that there's, in fact, at a, at a point, he told me to write down. I wrote down everything. I submitted to him with faith, believing God. So gradually, even though at that point in time it was like, but I kept on believing God. At a point, I have to travel. I went back home. I said, God, this is the place of my bed. I want to stay here and pray and, and seek for your face. Whatever it is that is a challenge, I believe there's nothing too difficult for you. And brethren, by the grace of God, God answered the prayer. That today I can stand and look back and remember that those days have passed. I want to thank God who has done it. And for every one of us, God is going to visit us one after the other in Jesus' name. You can clap better than that. That clapping will bring a testimony to you in Jesus' name. Shall we rise up on our feet as we go to the Lord in prayer to thank the Lord for what the Lord has been doing in this place. Every Wednesday we come here and pray, and God is here to answer our prayer. And today I want to assure you, as we pray together, God will also answer our prayer. Thank the Lord for the answer to the prayer of our sister. He meet our Father and the Lord. They prayed one on one, and God answered him. Please. I told you one of the attributes or attitude that we need is the attitude of appreciation. Open your mouth and worship God. Let us rise up together. Open your mouth and thank God for what God did for our sister. Some of you may not know the weight of that testimony. I knew about it. It was becoming like a terrible problem. It was just like a repeated thing that I've refused to bow. But today, she has a testimony. If you have anything like that in your life, like that of her, that I've refused to bow, maybe for years, it's been there, you've been struggling, and you are dying. Do you know that even today, that thing can be destroyed? Open your mouth and appreciate God for who he is, our consistency in God will always produce a miracle. When you don't give up, when you don't surrender to defeat, when you don't allow the devil and give him a room to rejoice over you, you always emerge a winner. God is always there. You are bound to prevail as you keep putting your trust in God, leaning on him. Depending upon him, it does not matter how long, God will bring you out of your troubles. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Can you give me a better amen? amen? If you believe you are in for a blessing today and this year, can you shout a better amen? amen. If you believe that all your blessings this year, and today will come to pass. Can you shout a better amen? amen? We want to sing together. You can open your eyes. We want to sing from the gospel hymn and song. Number 151. 151. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. There shall be showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us, now a refreshing calm, and now honor thy word. There shall be showers of blessing, O, that today they might fall. Now as to God we are confessing 
now as on Jesus we call. There shall be showers of blessing if we but trust and obey. There shall be seasons refreshing if we let God have his way. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. <laughs> Showers of blessing, I need. 
close your eyes, open your mouth and pray. Claim this weddings of this song to mean something to be yours. Why are you here? What do you need from God? Believe God will bless you because it's a promise of love. There shall be showers of blessing. Believe it. Over the hills and the valleys. Let there, be, there shall be precious reviving again. Send them upon me. Send them upon us, O Lord. Grant unto me, unto us, now a refreshing. Come, Lord, and honor thy word. Let God honor the word of our prayer this morning. All the prayer that have been done by the men of God today. Let God come and honor that word. All the scriptures that have been read today. Let God come and honor that word. The word of God you are going to hear now. Let God come and honor his word. He has promised. Claim it. They are yours. There shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today, not tomorrow, let it fall on you. Let it fall on your family. Claim every blessing you need today. They are yours. Claim every blessing you want today. Now as to God, we are confessing. There shall be showers of blessing if we but trust and obey. That's all. There shall be a season of refreshing. There shall be a season of refreshing. God will refresh your life, refresh your family, refresh your prayer life, refresh your spiritual life, refresh your love for him, and refresh your heart of evangelism. Open your mouth and pray and say, God, you have promised me blessing. I claim it for me, for my family, for my church, for the land. Claim the blessing of God today that you will not leave this place as you came. Never. Promise the Lord and say, God, you must bless me today. I have come to receive salvation. I have come to receive healing. I have come to receive deliverance. I have come to receive favor. I want you to picture something today in your mind. Picture one thing in your heart. Picture something in your mind. Don't just come here and let your heart be blank. No. Picture something right now. What is that thing you want God to do for you today? Mention that thing. What is that thing you want God to do for you today? Mention that thing. That particular thing. Picture something. Visualize something in your mind. And so that as the word of God is coming now, your heart will be centered on that. And you are saying, God, today, I am going home with this. I am going on with this blessing. This is what I want you to do for me this day, this week, this month, this year. God, this is what I want. So that when God has done it, then you will know. When God has answered the prayer, then you will know. But if you have no picture at all, if you have nothing in your mind, even when God has blessed you, how will you know God has blessed you? You must picture something in your heart and say, God, this particular thing, I need from you. This miracle is what I want from you. I need this favor. And the Lord will surprise you. The Lord will come and do it for you. Are you having sickness in your body? Tell God about that particular sickness. Prove God today. And you will see at the end of this service today, that sickness will quit your body. That sickness will quit your body. It does not matter what doctor said. You may say you have high blood pressure. You may say you have typhoid. You may say you have fibroid. You may say you have eye problem. You may say you have brain problem. You may say you have eye problem. Whatever it is, mention that thing. God is here to take it away for you and do it for you. If you are jobless, tell God. If you need money for business and you don't know how to get the money, just tell the Lord and the door shall be opened. And because God has promised us showers of blessing, you are the one to claim it. Key to it and you will receive it today. Not tomorrow, today. In Jesus' name we are prayed. All those who believe they will have miracle and blessing today, can they give me a very good amen there? If you are among those that God will bless this morning, can you shout a better amen? amen? If you believe your being here today will never be in vain, can you shout a good amen, dear? Amen. And so shall it be for you. Amen. I say so shall it be for you. Amen. I say so shall it be for you. Amen. Father, we want to thank you once again. Because this morning, there shall be showers of blessing. 
That sister there will be blessed. That brother there will be blessed. That family that have been crying day and night because of that particular problem. That thing is over today in the name of Jesus Christ. You will solve every problem today. You will meet us at the point of our needs. Lord, do it and take all the glory. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Give me a better amen. You can sit down. I see showers of blessing upon you. I said, I see showers of blessing upon you. That your desire today is granted. You don't believe it. I said that your desires today is granted. You know, just believe God we have said here. And today, you will go home blessed. I want to share with you this morning on the topic, scriptural keys to blessings. Scriptural keys to blessings. There are many scriptural keys, Bible-based keys. But I may not get uh, mention all of them today in a message like this. But I'll just give you a few of them. Those keys that are scriptural, biblical keys, the keys that have been tested and proven, that does not fail, what are those keys? That if I apply them, it will always work. You apply them in America, it will work. You apply them in Nigeria, it works. You apply them anywhere, in your home and family, in your personal life. These keys are always workable wherever and whenever you apply them. And so I want you to understand these keys I'm going to mention and then understand it very well, know it very well. You will apply it here today and when you get home, continue to apply it. You will discover that closed doors shall be open. That amen is not too strong. Scriptural keys to blessings. You need blessing? Answer me now. Do we need blessings? There is no body on earth that does not need blessing. Blessings are needed and are desired by all. There are those who need physical blessing. There are those who need spiritual blessings. What, are, what do I mean? There are those who who are born again, born again, real born again, godly people, children of God. But a lot of things elude them. They're born again, but they have no child. They're born again, they have no husband. They're born again, they're jobless. They're born again, it's as if every door about them are closed. Born again, so what they need is that God should visit some area of their lives and meet their needs. There are some people too who have their physical needs met. They are working, they have children, they have husband, they have wife, but they are not born again. And that's the poorest man on earth. When you have every other thing you can think of and you do not have Christ, you are the poorest man, you are the poorest woman. God look at those people as wretched, not having anything. So there are those who are physically bankrupt. There are those who are spiritually bankrupt. There are those who are rich, rich in the things of this world, but very poor in the things of God. Spiritually, they are poor. So that's why every man on earth, the richest man in the world who is not born again, has need of something. That's this is what Esau did not know. When Jacob sent some gifts and sent some things to him, and then Esau told Jacob, his brother, I said, keep those things to yourself. I don't have need of those things. But there was something Esau did not have. Though he had the physical things, but spiritually, he was a poor man. And so there are people that are spiritually good 
but they are physically poor. So that's why I said, the blessing is desired by all. Those who need physical blessing, God will give you physical blessings. Those who need spiritual blessing, God will give you spiritual blessings. And those who need material blessings, God will give you material blessings. Those who need marital blessings, God will give you marital blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. God will give you, for those who need academic blessing, God will give you academic blessing in Jesus' name. What about those who, need prof who have professional need? I don't know, they want one thing or the other to add value to their lives. Professionally, they want to make progress. God will give that to you in Jesus' name. And failure to apply the keys is failure to blessing. I will tell you the keys. Because when I show you the key and you say, I have need. Pastor, I have need. My brother, I have need. But the keys are available. And you fail to apply those keys. Failure to do so is failure to blessings. It's failure to miracles. It's failure to open doors. Because if I have a key in my hand and my doors are shut, but the keys are there. But I do not know how to open the door with those keys. I can still be there suffering while in the house, in the storehouse. There are so much for me to benefit in life. There are some people that just, just live like that ignorantly. They don't know they have keys. And even when they are given the keys, they are not using the key. And they are suffering because of failure to make use of the keys that God has made available. And you know, when the Bible says something in the book of Matthew, look at very well Matthew chapter 16. I want to read verse 19. Matthew chapter 16, reading from verse 19. Please open your ears very well because today is a day of blessing and you must be blessed. Say to yourself, I must be blessed. Nobody on earth, no power anywhere that can stop your blessing, but open your ears well and hear what God is saying, what the Bible is saying. And then when you gather these keys together, make use of them from now, and you will see that every closed door before you shall be made open in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at verse 19. And I will give unto thee, what do you see there? The keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven why keys that's the question why, did, why didn't God said I will give you key or a key he said I will give you keys what does that mean that means there are so many doors to be opened. That simply means there are so many doors to be closed. So many doors that are good enough for me that must be opened. And I need keys to open all of them. That also means that there are so many negative doors that are open against me and I need keys to close all of them. So he said, I, I've given unto you the keys of the kingdom. Look at the Bible. In Revelation chapter, before I begin to tell you those spiritual keys that you need and you must have them. And once you have them and you know how to apply them, I see your doors open. I see, I see your doors open. No, all the bad luck will disappear. Failures will be, disappear. I'm telling you the weakness shall be turned to strength in the name of Jesus Christ. All the enemies that are terrorizing your life you will see yourself overcoming them in Jesus' name. Now, look at Revelation chapter 3. Let me tell you that you have an open door. Then you must understand, if my doors are not open, if my doors are shut, now the Bible says the foundation of life be destroyed. What can a righteous man do? Look at Revelation chapter 3, 7 and 8. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. Revelation chapter 3, 
verses 7 and 8. I read, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These things said he, that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shut it, and he that shut it and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have said before thee, what do you see there? An open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. And I want to assure you today that whatever door God has said before you, God will open them up for you. Now, if you look at, you see, what you do as a Christian when you are reading the Bible, you compare scriptures with scriptures. If you don't compare scripture with scriptures, you miss out in God's miracle. When you don't know how to balance the scriptures together, you read this, this one said this, and you read this other one, something similar, but there is a slight difference. Then it is now your duty to now compare. Okay, if God said this, why is it like this? God said like this, why am I not seeing it? That's why you now compare scripture with scriptures. Then you analyze it. Then you'll be able to arrive at a conclusion. God promised me deliverance. Why am I not delivered? God promised me healing. Why am I not, am I, am I, am I not healed? God promised me salvation. Why am I not saved? God promised me the, every good thing of life that they are available for me. The question now is, why am I suffering in the midst of plenty? That's why I said you compare scripture with scripture. Yet, I said, I've said before you an open door, which no man can do what? Can shut. But do you know that a lot of our doors have been shut? Because if you just take that alone, no man can shut and you're not praying. No man can shut, and you are not, and you are careless. No man can shut. You don't even care to do anything about it. And say Christ has said, it. and I say, look at the Bible, in First Corinthians chapter sixteen, verse nine. That's what I say. You compare scriptures with scriptures, and that's where you have a balanced understanding. Then you'll be able to now know how to fight for that. Your open doors to ever remain open. So if you take things for granted. That door that is open to you by God, enemy are interested in that open door. Enemy are fighting against that open door. Enemy are doing everything to make sure that door is shut. That that door you don't enjoy it. Now look at it. In First Corinthians chapter sixteen, are you there? Verse nine. For a great door and a fatal is open unto me. Am I right? That's in agreement with what? Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. Paul said, I know that. The door is open. That promise is there. But look at the big part of it. And there are many what? Advers okay, what's the work of the adversaries now? Is the adversary there to support the open door? And Sammy Church, that's where many Christians face and miss it. God has given me a promise and they stop there. No fight, no prayer, no battle. Are the enemy adversaries there to support and encourage the open door and say this door that God has opened for this sister, be open, remain open. The adversaries are there to block the door, shut the door, close the door. That's the work of the adversaries there. That this God has opened door for this man, for this woman, me, adversary, I will fight to close that door. That's the work of adversaries. Paul said a, a great door, an effectual door is open unto me and there are many adversaries. In the family, many adversaries. In the village, in the compound where you live, adversaries are there. What are they doing? Are they there to encourage you for success? To support your success, to lift up your hands, 
And to tell you, you must make it. Adversaries are there to oppose you. They want to close that door. They want to stop your progress. They want to stop your marriage. They want to hinder you. They want to stop you. But I thank God today. After this message, you will conquer all your enemies. Whether they come in with sickness or poverty or failure or barrenness or a delay, I'm telling you today, know your keys and use them. Your adversaries will bow and the door God has opened must be opened. Must remain open in the name of Jesus Christ. Every delay will be raised today in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at this. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18, that's why I said you compare scriptures with scriptures. And then you'll be able to have a balanced knowledge. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, I read verse 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18. I'm waiting for you. Are you there? Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again. But see something there. What happened there? But Satan hindered us. There's always a person to fight. To hinder the open door. Stop your progress. Hinder your progress. Hinder your marriage. Hinder your children. Hinder the church. Inda I mean, it's just there. And that's his job. That's his job of adversary. He's just to oppose, to fight, to hinder every good thing that you're supposed to enjoy. The devil is against it. He's saying, no, it cannot be, it cannot be. So if you're lazy and you just feel, well, God is there, I'm a Christian, and all that, I want to tell you today, adversaries, I see them bow. Now let me quickly tell you a few keys, just selected ones, few, selected few, just six of them I want to tell you. I want to tell you, number one, is the key of genuine salvation. People don't see that as a key. Hey, God bless me. God will bless everybody. God bless everybody. You know, if you go to some churches, they say, ah, everybody, God will bless you, prosper you, do like this and do like that. Well, in prosperity, prosperity is a law. Somebody can prosper and yet not born again. Do you know that? Do you know it? Yes, somebody can have money, prosper, marry, have children. It's a, it's a law. Because anything that is a law given by God works anywhere. There are sinners who know how to give. They prosper. Am I right? There are Christians who don't know how to give. They are poor. It's a law. And the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and do what? And subdue it. That's the purpose of marriage. Even sinners who are not born again, there are many children. And even those who are born again have no child. It's a law. So, sometimes, People just stand on that and say, if I'm not good, why is God blessing me? There are blessings above blessings. There are blessings that have limitations. There are blessings unlimited. There are blessings beyond the planet Earth. There are blessings that's limited to this world. Some people don't know that. So if a man may have everything on Earth, that's why Christ said, what shall he profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and do what? And lose his own soul. So we mean that there are blessings that cannot go beyond this planet Earth. So one of the number one key that will open door to many good things, both here and eternal. Let me also tell you this: the dangerous aspect of it, or dangerous aspect of it, is that there are some people that are physically blessed, but because the enemy are too stronger than them, they render their blessings how useless but you will enjoy every blessing given to you by god you are blessed physically and you have god that means that the devil cannot crush what god has given to you they cannot it means you have a backup god is in support of you of your blessings there are those who have money but they never use less their money for them there are those who have children but the devil useless their children for them. There are those who have all the things of this world. But do you know that even the peace of mind, they don't have it. They can't sleep in the night. So we mean that they don't have a complete blessing. Total blessing. But the key we are talking about now is the key of genuine salvation. It's a key. Look at the Bible. In Jeremiah 
chapter 5 in verse 25. Salvation is a key. There are those who go to church but not born again. In Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 25. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 25. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 25. Church, are you there? Verse 25. I read. Your iniquities. What do you see there? I've turned away. What do you see there? These things. And your sins. What do you see there? Have withholding good things from you. Sin is a barrier. Sin. God said there are things that are supposed to come your way. And you cannot enjoy them. You cannot have them because of sinful life or lifestyle. He said, it is not the devil now. It is not the demons now. But it is the person's sin that have turned away all the good things that are supposed to come to him or her. And then the sins of the man as withheld, withholding, that when the blessing is about coming, Satan, because he look at the bed as a sinner, he say, God, you cannot bless this man. You cannot bless this woman. You cannot bless this boy. So the sin of the person also is fighting against the blessing of the man or the woman. So sin is a, a great enemy. So you can see that the key to the blessing we need, scriptural keys, is that the person must be what? Born again. He must have salvation. So salvation is a key. Now I can also give you this. You can write down the book of Psalm, sorry, uh, Isaiah chapter 59 from verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 59, 1 to 3. You see that salvation is powerful. When we are saved from sin, we are born again it's like someone who is set to go. When you are born again, you are set to begin a prosperous journey, a glorious journey, both here on earth and in heaven. And so, when you are saved from sin, you are delivered from so many things. And when you continue to remain in sin, the devil will use that sin to hinder, to fight. You can even go to God and have his right. You will go to God. Could you imagine a person like Moses? The meekest man in his own time. With all that he did for God, he loved God with all his heart. And he served the Lord faithfully. But do you know that when Moses did what he did, and God was not happy. The devil wanted to use that against him. The devil will never use any sin against you. He told God, see this man. This man has no right to enter the promised land. No. See what he did. He got angry. What are you doing that will make the devil to use it against you? That when you need that to pray, Satan will go before God and say, God, must the prayer of this man be answered? Must you answer the prayer of this woman? Is it not the one that have a boyfriend that committed abortion, that told a lie? God, see what this person did. The devil uses sin against us, against people, so that God will not bless them. He would tell God, he said, this man has no right for these blessings. So the sin of the man will be fighting against the man or the woman. That's why I said, number one key is the key of what? Genuine salvation. Can I hear a good amen, dear? Give me a better amen, dear. Job 22. Job 22. Job 22. Sin is a setback. And this year, your sin will not bring setback to you. Give me a good amen, dear. This year, no setback. Satan will be looking for something. What can I do to bring this man and still make this man to remain a failure as he has been for years? Let me give him this thing to do. Let me let him commit this sin. No sin will pull you backward. I say no sin will pull you backward. You will overcome every sin in the name of Jesus Christ. Sin is a setback. Look at this. Job 22 from verse 21. Job 22 Salvation is a major key. Job 
22 from verse 21. Job 22 from verse 21. Are you there? Acquaint now thyself with, with him and be at peace because every sinner is at variance with God. Thereby good shall come upon thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thy heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity from thy tabernacles. Then, when you have done that, thou shalt lay up gold, a dust of, of gold of a fire, or as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have a, a plenty of silver. For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty, and shall lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto Him, as we are going to make this morning. Can I hear a good amen there? When sin is repented of, confess and turn away from, and it shall hear thee. And thou shalt do what? Pay thy vow. You can see that when you have salvation, then you have the key to to open the kingdom, then you have access to the kingdom. That will go. See, when you have settled all that, then you come to pray now. Because sins forgiven, sins repented of, then you now have access to the throne of grace, access to the throne of God. You are now a child of God, a daughter of God. You can kneel down in the day, you can kneel down in the night, you can come to God like this and we pray congressionally, and you call upon God. Say, Thou shalt make thy prayer. Unto him, and he shall hear thee, because your life is right. And thou shalt pay thy vows. Then thou also shall decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. Can I hear a good amen, dear? And when men are cast down, trouble everywhere, confusion everywhere, then. Thou shalt say, There is a lifting up, and it shall save thy humble person. So you can see the power of the key of salvation. When we are born again, I told you to write down the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, from verse 1 to 3. You will see it also there. Then the next key we need to have, please take note. No, don't you don't only write down, let this key sink down to your subconsciousness. Let it be in your mind. That if you are going to pray after now, you pull out the key. You go home, you know I have the keys. My salvation is there. And the next key there is the key of righteousness. The key of righteousness. You know, it was righteousness that helped uh, Daniel, that spear his life in the lion's den. Am I right? So you need the key of righteousness. And the Bible says something in the book of Proverbs 14, verse 34. It says, Righteousness does what? Exalted or exalt a nation. Righteousness. Do you want your life to be exalted this year? Be righteous. Do you want your family to be exalted? Be righteous. Do you want you to be honored anywhere you go? Be righteous. The Bible says, Righteousness does what? Exalted a nation. But sin is a reproach. Sin brings disgrace. But your life this year shall be righteous. That's a key. So, number one, the key of salvation. Number two is what? Is the key of righteousness. Then number two is the key of faith. You see, if you, are, if you are saved from sin, you are born again, which many of us, by God's grace, have experience of. If you are righteous, many believers are righteous and are still jobless. You see, that's why I say keys. The Bible says keys. There are those who are born again that are still suffering from a particular sickness or disease. But they're born again. There are those who are righteous, but they live on drugs. You cannot say that not because they live on drugs, they are not saved, they are not righteous. No. Some people, but then you still need another one with the faith also. So it is not enough to say, I am born again, good enough. I am righteous, good enough. But do you know that if you lack faith, if you lack faith, you can be saved from sin, 
You can be righteous. If you lack faith, you will still miss a lot of things. He said, I will give unto you kiss of the kingdom that you kiss your prayer with that every good thing that God has made available and has promised us, we have them, we enjoy them and all that. Keys. Salvation is the key. Then you are born again, but poverty is there. Salvation is a key. You are born again, then barrenness is there. Salvation is a key. You are born again, you have no job. Salvation is a key. You are born again, and you are living on drugs. That without drugs, you cannot sleep. You are born again, it's a key. Then, righteousness comes in. You are righteous. There are so many righteous people who are still suffering in the hand of Satan. And that ought not to be. Because that's why you have knowledge of God now. That's why you have the knowledge of the promise of God, the word of God. I don't want, no, I didn't add that today as a part of our, you know, you see, one of the keys we need is the knowledge of the word of God. The knowledge of God's promises. Because if I don't have the knowledge of what God has promised me, even though I am safe from sin, even though I am righteous, I can still be lacking a lot of things in my life. So, we mean that salvation is there. Very good. Righteousness is there. But you still need the knowledge of God's word as one of the key. Though I didn't add it as a part of what I'm... But then the next one, the key of faith. Can I hear you shout faith? Say it again. Say it again. Key of faith. That even though you are born again, even though you are righteous, you still need to have faith for the blessing you need to come. So if you say, I am saved from sin, I'm righteous, and that's all, and I don't need faith, you can be saved from sin and righteous at the same time, but you can still be sick. You can still be coming to church and the pastor is preaching and you will not have any miracle. Because you also need faith as one of the keys. Look at the Bible. In the book of uh, Mark chapter 11, reading from verse 22 to 24, the disciples, you know, they, they, they brought uh, somebody, look at the disciples, they were with Jesus Christ, but many a times they manifested faithlessness. And faithlessness brought about failure in their lives. We cannot say they were not born again. They were born again, but they were faithless. Many times they manifested faithlessness. And as a result, they could not do what they're supposed to do. So it's not enough to be born again, but you need faith as well. Look at the Bible. In Mark chapter, Mark chapter 11. But I want to tell you that this year, God will give us keys. You're having keys now. And because you have keys, you will have combined blessings. Combine favor. Combine miracle. All around miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at it. In Mark chapter 11, reading from verse 22. Are you there? I say, are you there? I say, church, are you there? I read. Verse 22. And Jesus answering said unto them, unto which people? Unto his disciples. Unto his disciples. Have faith in God. You are born again. You are my disciples. But you need to have faith in God. Because even though you are born again, if you don't have faith in God, your mountain will remove or moved. Even though you are born again, you have no faith in God, your prayers cannot be answered. Because you need faith for your prayer to be answered. And so, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, can we say we don't have mountains? We have them. But it takes faith to move mountains. You are born again. You are righteous. But then you need faith for your mountains to be moved. When you pray, and you don't pray by faith, nothing will happen. So, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, 
and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall do what have whatsoever he saith that's you I say that's you therefore I say unto you what things ever ye desire when ye pray what's the next word there believe it's like saying have faith that you receive them and what will happen you shall have them so salvation without faith is not enough righteousness without faith in God is not enough so you need these things you need to be born again that's an entrance point or an entry point then you are righteous then number three you have the key of what the key of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 Hebrews 11 verse 6 Hebrews 11 verse 6 some people say I'm born again why are these things like this in my life why am I suffering this sickness why am I having this challenge why are my prayer not answered am I not born again well one cannot say you are not born again you are born again if you know you are born again then you are born again if the spirit of God bears in you witness that you are saved you are saved then that is not enough to give you all the miracle you need that's why you need righteousness that's why you need faith Hebrews chapter 11 I read from verse 6 Hebrews 11 verse 6 but without faith it is what impossible to please him put it this way without faith it is impossible to receive answers to prayers without faith it is impossible to receive anything from God for he that uh, cometh to God must believe that he is and that is a rewarder of them that do what diligently seek him so we need the key of faith then the next thing I want to tell you is the key of prayer you see all these keys are there that keys that you are born again you are righteous you have faith then you cannot say I have faith I don't need to pray in fact it is prayer and faith that must go together Jesus have all the faith you can think of but he prayed praise the Lord I said praise the Lord yes he prayed and he also encouraged us to pray so one cannot say well I, have, I am born again I'm righteous I have faith in God so I don't need prayer what is prayer prayer is telling God what you want prayer is asking from God that's prayer you tell God what you want through prayers by faith so if you refuse to pray that means you have nothing to tell God and so you need nothing from him you need nothing from him a father a, a child is there coming back from school and they drove him out of there uh, because of school fees. And the child just come and keep quiet at home. And they didn't tell the father anything. They didn't tell the father, daddy, they said I should bring school fees tomorrow. And keep quiet. The father is not a spirit. They drove the child because of textbooks. And the child keep quiet. The father is not a spirit to know that my child came back because of... No, no. The child must open mouth and tell the father the need he or she has. So if you keep quiet and you don't tell God your pains, you don't tell God your agonies, you don't tell God your, your, your discouragement, you don't tell God your problems, you don't tell God your need. The Bible says, let your request be made known unto God. So when you don't pray, you are telling God, I don't have any request. So I have no need. So someone said that a close mouth is a close destiny. A close mouth is a close testimony. A close mouth is a close miracle. A close mouth is a close blessing. When you close your mouth as a Christian and you are not prepared to pray, that means you have closed your destiny. All the blessings that you're supposed to because God even said that we should talk to Him 
we should appeal to him. We should call upon him. And so, prayer is one of the keys that we need to get all the blessings we need. And this year, you will have them. Give me a good amen, dear. This year, you will have them. Because we are going to apply the keys. Salvation, don't forget, is a key. What again? Righteousness is the key. Faith is there. Prayer is there. Look at. Look at James chapter 4. Verses 2 and 3. James chapter 4. Verse two. Let me tell you, everyone here will have miracle today. Believe what I'm saying right now. You know, our problems are different. Am I right? Some people have need of a mission. Some people have need of job. Some people have need of uh, healing. Some people have need of uh, money for business. Some people have need of healing. And whatever you know. So you apply the scriptures based on your personal need. So as we are going through the word of God, you are, you know, you are picturing something in your mind. You say, this is what I need. This is what I need. And as we are going through the scriptures, let the scripture go through your mind. And then picture that thing. And after this very message and the prayer, the miracle is coming your way by the grace of God. So look at this. Look at this. In James, chapter what? What, what chapter? I say what chapter? Chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. I read. Ye lost and have not. Ye kill and desire to have. Everyone have this one. I desire to be great. I desire to be healed. I desire to prosper. I desire to have children. I desire to have a wife. I desire to have this one. I desire to get admission. I desire all those desires that are like a dead dreams without prayer. He said, yeah, you desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Then, yet you have not. Why? Because he has not. You desire this and desire that. I want to be great. My family to be like this. My children to be like this. I want to have this kind of job. I want to be like this. I want to achieve this. All those desires. God said you desire all those things, but you don't have them. Because you don't ask for them. You don't ask for them. Look at verse 2. Verse 3, that, rather. He said, ye ask and receive not because he has a miss that ye may consume it upon your lust. Even those who say, God, I've asked now, I've asked now. God said, Why are you not having them? Because you ask a miss. You act not correctly. You ask not correctly. You ask a miss. But do you know the question now is if I've been asking, why am I not having? If I'm to ask, how do I should I ask? That's why you see in prayer there are a lot of coloring. In prayers, there are a lot of things that make prayer. You know, like the soup you prepare. When all the ingredients are not there, you can never say you are prepared soup. You see, how shall we pray? You know, you ask God in faith. That's where faith comes in. When you are asking, you ask in faith. When you are asking, you ask consistently. Like a sister gave a testimony. Yes. That's the thing. You ask consistently. When you are asking, you ask perseveringly. You are asking. Some people just stop. I ask, I ask now. Why is it not? No, 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 no. You don't stop there. You ask, you continue. You ask consistently. You ask perseveringly. You ask constantly. You keep asking until the rain falls. And so, if some people, you say, okay, I ask. Look at the Bible. In Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. So you must know this. In Matthew chapter 7, 7 and 8. Matthew 7, verse 7 and 8. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Are you there? Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Praise the Lord. Do you know that? Those three things mentioned there are different, different levels of prayer. You ask, what's the next one there? 
Eh? You seek. What's the next thing there? You knock. You ask. You don't stop at asking. You seek. You knock. Look at verse 8. Assurance. For everyone that asketh does what? Receive it. Meaning that if A received, B also can receive. If C received, D also can receive. So if A, B, C received, and then D, E, F, W, whatever can, whatever is not receiving, that means it's because they did not ask. Because God will only give to those who do what? Who ask. Everyone that asked today, from today, you will start asking something. And you will have them. I say you will have them. You will receive them. So if you stop asking, then you stop receiving. I, I told you something and I need to repeat it. Even if your nose is flat and you want your nose pointed, pray and say, God, recreate this nose and God will do it for you. I'm telling you the truth. God, what you desire, you have. If things are going zigzag in your life, or your leg is paining you, your stomach is paining you, a doctor gave this report, and you say, God, you lay your hand there every morning and say, God, this thing, you didn't give it to me. It's not a blessing. It must go. And as you keep praying and believing the Lord, by the time you wake up the following morning, that thing will disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. You keep asking. Because God will give you what you ask for. Then the next key is the key of determination. You know, a lot of people just pray. Just pray. God, I want blessing. I want blessing. There is no strong determination in them to get that thing. Look at those who are pursuing money. Look at those who are pursuing a particular thing. Education. And you see in them. Look at those who are, who are politicians. Though we heard about a particular uh, uh, American uh, president. Who tried how many times and failed? How many times? Well, I cannot really remember now. But severally and failed. But at the end, what happened? He won. That tells you what? It's a determination. I must be a president. Like the man that produced the... Uh, all, look at the, all these things we are enjoying now, electricity. He tried... 999 times. 999 times. And at the very last one that's supposed to make it how many times? 1,000. He succeeded. And so when they asked him, he said, you failed how many times? He said, he didn't fail. He was only looking for a better way to do what? To produce, to succeed. So it was not a failure. That's determination. 999 times. Could you imagine that? If such a person was not determined, he would have packed up long ago and give up. But at the 1,000 times, he succeeded. So that tells us the importance of what? Determination. This is what I'm looking for. I must get it. This is where I'm going. I must get there. God has promised me this. He has said this to me. By the grace of God, I am going to achieve it. And then you are determined. No, even in prayer, you need determination. In evangelism, to win souls, there must be what? A determination. We're told of a man who prayed for the conversion of somebody, a family, for 40 years daily. Who pray for conversion of somebody, a soul to be saved, every day by day for 40 years before the man got saved. It would take a very strong man of the time to do that. That you pray today, the man become a worse sinner tomorrow. You pray tomorrow, the man become a worse sinner next tomorrow. You pray next tomorrow, and the man you when, the more you see the man, you get discouraged and say, Can a, a, a man like this ever be saved? So am I not wasting my time for praying for this man? Look at the number of years I prayed, and this man is still stubborn and still wicked. That's how many of us are. We pray for our children today. If they are not changed today, we give up. That child must be changed. Something will happen to that child. Some people you pray for. You may not see that in today. You may see that miracle tomorrow. Determination. 
So it's a key to success and to blessing and to miracle. Anyone who is not determined goes nowhere in life. Even in business. If you see successful businessmen here and there, they are those who have made up their mind to succeed. And they said, business is what? Profit and lost. If they tell you their losses, if they tell you how many times they lose, if they tell you how many times they fail, if they tell you how many times they lost their capital, but because they are determined to do business, they will see either borrow money and try and still go back to that same business and you see them today, they are well established. And people are envying them. You don't know how they started, how they got there, go and ask them. It was determination that brought them to the level where they are today. Some people are looking for success, for miracle, for open doors, for victory. And you want to win souls like pastors and leaders and workers, your church to grow and you are not determined for soul winning in prayer. You go and go and go again like Moses until Pharaoh will bow. And Pharaoh must bow. Amen. Let me tell you, this year, every Pharaoh standing before us, anywhere, they will bow in the name of Jesus Christ. But you will need a man of determination like Moses. You are rugged. You never give up. You are steadfast. And you are stubborn in a way. Scripturally stubborn. And say, God, I will not give up until this mountain moves. That's how Jacob got the miracle. When he wrestled with the angel, angel told him, Jacob, it is enough. I want to go. Let me go. Jacob said, what are you saying? You don't know me. I'm determined. I will never let you go until you do what? Did you get a miracle? Did you get a blessing? You'll be more than Jacob this year. Blessing must come. Miracle must come. That thing you are looking for, you have it in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is not without determination, my brother, my sister. If you are determined, you will get what you are looking for. So, in the key you are looking for, and that's a keys of salvation, righteousness, faith, what again? Prayer, and then keys of what? Determination. You can write down Genesis chapter 32, the story of, of uh, Jacob. I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. God will bless you this year. Except thou bless me. God will bless you this year. Except thou bless me. I will not give up. God will bless you this year. And then the widow, sorry, the woman that have an issue of blood, in Mark chapter 5 verse 28, it was the determination that gave her the miracle. Look at that. In Mark chapter 5, a lot of people are looking for blessing here and there from God and they are not determined. How do you get to the miracle? How will the miracle come? Look at it. In Mark chapter 5, look at verse 26. Mark chapter 5, sorry, verse 28 rather. Are you there? I read. For she said, that's a determination. For she said, who said it for her? Answer me, church. Who said it for her? Who said it for her? She was determined. She said to herself, you will say something to yourself this year. And today, that God, you must bless me. God, I will touch you. God, you will change my condition. God, you revive me. God, my child will prosper. God, I will win souls. God, I will be successful. But for it is said. Nobody said it for her. That was personal determination. Look at this. For she said, are you there? If I may do what? Touch, but is close. What do you see there? I shall be made whole. That was determination. What are you determined to achieve this year? Then the last one before I pray with you is the key of giving. The key of giving. What are keys are there? But I want to tell you just these few ones that if you have these things, these keys this year, I will see you on top. All the members of this region, of this church will be on top. Tell others who are not here, they will be on top. You need these keys. Salvation, is a key. Righteousness is a key. Faith in God is a key. What again? Prayer is what? Is the key. And what's the next one down? 
strong determination is a key and the next one is what? The key of giving. Please be liberal this year. Love to give. Give to your neighbors. Give to the needy. Give for the work of God. Give in the church. Give your tithes. That's how you make a way for blessings for yourself. Give to every time there's a need in the house, even when there's no, there's no announcement and you are able to afford, you see the need in the church on your own. Meet your pastor. Do that. Solve that problem. Learn to give. And as you are doing that, doors shall be open unto you. It's a key of giving. You give your time to attend Bible study. It's giving. You give your time to attend revival service on Thursday. That's a part of it. You give your talents to work for God. You give your time for evangelism. And you give your time for prayers. Just do that. Give all you have. Give of your best to the master. And the master in return will pour his blessings upon your life. Give me a good amen, dear. Look at this before we pray. Genesis chapter 22 from verse 8, 16 to 18. People say, God, bless me. God bless me. God bless me. God bless me. That's what they know. That's all. And they will not ask themselves a question. What have you done? What, 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 what preparation have you made? How, how, how will God bless you? Tell me. Look at it. In Genesis 22. Genesis 22. Genesis 22 from verse 16. I'm waiting for you. Are you there? From verse 16 to 18. Before we pray. Genesis 22 from verse 16. I read. And said, by myself have I sworn. Who is talking here? Who is talking here, church? On your behalf this year, God will speak. Your life will provoke God to talk. God will talk on your behalf. God will talk to your enemies. God will talk to your sickness. God will talk to your badness. God will talk to your poverty. God will talk to your enemies. Look at it. He said and said by myself, because I'm the greatest, there's none like me. Have I sworn, says the Lord. For because thou hast done this. What did he do? This thing. And has not withheld thy son. So precious to you. Thy only son. And you willingly. Even though you, I did not allow you to sacrifice him. But I saw your heart. I saw your mind. I saw your motive. I knew you meant business. You were not deceiving yourself. I knew everything about your heart. Before I stop you. But for that action you took. Because you, are, you, you preferred me to your son. And you loved me with the whole of your heart. And you were willing to sacrifice him for me. He said, because you have done this, Abraham. Look at verse 17. That in blessing. In blessing. Can I hear a good amen dear? You see, giving those word open doors. God said that in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed. As the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his eh, enemy, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because what you see there, thou hast obeyed my voice. This year, get these keys. I said, This year, get these keys, and we shall see you on the other side of testimony, of miracle, of favor, of open doors. Rise up. Rise up. Don't wait for me to motivate you to pray. Say, God, I need these keys. More than enough, these keys, have them. Open your mouth and pray. And say, God, give me the grace to understand what I've had now. And to apply. It doesn't cost anything. The keys are there. You have had them. I've mentioned them. Now, it's time for you now to receive the keys now. The key of salvation, righteousness, faith, prayer, strong determination. The key of giving. Just open your mouth and pray. I say, God, I key to these keys. 
I receive them. I receive them. I claim them. I receive them. You are not born again. You can confess your sin and get born again right now. You can confess your sin and get born again right now. He doesn't tell anything. And the Bible says, when you are saved, that is a key already. That's the starting point. That's a starting point. That's the beginning of a good life. And then righteousness comes in. And you are righteous, like Daniel. And then you are exalted by God because of your righteousness. And then you have faith in God. That's like the hand I received from God. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And with faith, your mountain can be moved. Do you have faith in God? Salvation may be there. Righteousness may be there. But if you lack faith, my brother, you'll still be suffering defeat and failure in life. And then you have that. And then you are prayerful. 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 You always see the face of God. And you always call upon the name of the Lord. You are prayerful. You call upon God. He said, call upon me. Always asking from God all the things you need. You make your request known unto Him for that church as a pastor, for the members, for the land, and for yourself, and for your healing, and for your prosperity, and for your progress, for everything. And then you are prayerful. And not only that, you have that determination. You are determined to make it, you are determined to succeed. Pharaoh may argue. Pharaoh may argue. Pharaoh may prove stubborn. But you have made up your mind like David, uh, like, like, like Moses. And said, God, Israelites must come out. In evangelism, you need determination to win souls. Crusade is coming. Only those who are determined will get souls saved. They will have converts. They will have newcomers. But if you are not determined, you give up his sleep in prayer. You need determination. Because you may pray today. What you are praying for may not come now. But then you continue until the answer comes. You continue like Jacob. You need determination. The determination. The woman made up her mind. For she said, so she said, if only but can touch the hem of his garment. That's determination. You have determination, my brother, to succeed. Determination to get to that place. Determination to achieve that thing. Enemy may fight. Enemy may come in between. But you must make up your mind. And say, God, God, with you on my side, I must get there. I'm unstoppable. Determination must be there. My brother, do you know how to give to God? How to give to men? Are you liberal? Are you liberal? Are you liberal? Do you give to God? Do you give for the work of God? Do you pay your tithes? Are you stingy? Do you know how to give like Abraham? God said, Abraham, because of what you have done, because of what you have done, because you have obeyed me, because you did not hinder I mean, we told you, and your son from me, he said, in blessing, how do you want God to bless you when you cannot give to God? You cannot give to men and all that. God said, in blessing, because what you have done has provoked me, what you have done has challenged me, what you have done has moved me to bless you. Bless and bless, I will bless you. I swear not to any other person, to myself, because I am God. I have made up my mind. I've made up my mind. Do you want blessing this year? Blessing this day? Blessing this month? Blessing all the time? What do you need from God? You say, God, this is what I want. God, that's what I want. And you are telling God. And you mean business with God. And you have these keys available. You have these keys available. And you apply them. You apply them. You apply them in the morning. You apply them in the night. You apply them in the church. You apply them anywhere. And you are telling God, you are not keeping quiet. You are prayerful. You make your request known to God with all these keys available and I've mentioned here and you say God this is me this is me this is me I'm telling you this year this year when others are saying there's a casting down you will say in particular you in particular will say there's a lifting up I have a testimony I have a miracle I'm on top now I get to the other side no failure for me no defeat for me you will say blessing in abundance because of the keys that you have and you are able to make use of them them. my brother have the keys make use of them every day by day when you come here on Wednesday use those keys when you at you are at home make use of those keys anywhere you go to in the church on Monday on Monday on Thursday on Sunday every the crusade coming next week look at the crusade coming from 24th and you are saying God me 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 I'm going to be a part of it I will do the best I can and you are giving your time and you give your talent you give your money you give your everything and you say God because I need your blessing I want to be like Abraham the Lord said I will 
bless you. In blessing, I will bless you. You cannot just keep quiet and go want God to touch you and change you and bless. No, something must be done. Have the keys and use them. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Can I hear a better amen, dear? Can I hear another amen, dear? If you have received the key, can I hear a good amen, dear? Raise up your two hands. The keys are there. I say the keys are there. Don't pocket the key. Use it. I said use it. And as you apply the keys, I'm telling you, no closed doors. Every negative doors, you will shut them. Every positive doors, you will open them. You are not born again. The key of salvation is available. Have it. That's a starting point. Righteousness is a key. Faith in God all the time is the key. And that faith will take you to any level. Prayer is the key. And you need that to pray. I'm telling you, mountains will move. And then the key of what? Determination. You have made up your mind. That you will never get up until rain falls. David, uh, 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 Jacob said, I will not let thee go. Determination. And I want to tell you this year, you will not stop until you are blessed. Until you are healed. Until you are delivered. Until you are favored. Let me tell you, whatever miracle you need, just pick choice in your mind now. I want to pray a simple prayer. And when you step out here, you are stepping into that miracle. You will step into your healing, your deliverance. Do you want to give testimony? Make up your mind. Don't hide it. Because from today, something new will happen to you. I'm telling you the truth because after today, unless you didn't understand what I said here very well, if you understood me well, you are going home right now with a miracle. If you are sick before you came here, that sickness cannot go with you. If you be struggling to have money to start business, the door is open and unto you. Whatever has been the challenge in the past, I want to tell you today that the blessing has come. And that year, you will enjoy it. In Jesus' name, raise up your two hands. Father, it is done. It is done. It is done. Lord, I pray for everyone standing here. Whatever be their desires, their requests in their heart, unwritten, let their requests be granted. Lord, as they are leaving this place, for those who are sick, let the healing come. For those who are looking for a job, give them a job. Those looking for husband or wife, give them husband and wife. For those who are looking for children, touch their womb now in the name of Jesus Christ. For those who have been struggling to win souls and they have not been able to have one, Father, let the door of soul winning be open. In the name of Jesus Christ, every stubborn Pharaoh, let them bow in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has been trying to close their doors of blessing, shut their door of blessing, Father, let such adversity be removed now in the name of Jesus Christ. I see your adversaries no more. I see your adversaries no more. I see your adversaries no more. All those things that hindered you in the past, from today, they are completely out of the way. As you go back now, you are going home to succeed. You are going home to be victorious. You are going home with your blessing. And so shall it be from now. This year, you will record miracle upon miracle. Blessing upon blessing. Favor upon favor. Testimonies will never cease in your mouth. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered our prayers. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Let the blessed people shout a better amen.